Hey cats, it's Ed, Intergalactic Bud here. Today I'm very proud to furnish you with an initial review of the A6 Gel Nimbus 24. Thanks for joining us here on Ed Bud Running Shoe Reviews, it's always appreciated. If you haven't done so already, hit that subscribe button, but also click the bell below for notifications when I roll out those new videos for you. And you can also help the channel out a huge amount by giving this video a thumbs up like, but also sharing it with your running buddies. Danke schön. One of the top of the range A6 models for 2022, here in my hands, the Gel Nimbus 24. There's some significant tech built into this shoe. I've been running in this one for about four weeks now. It's been kindly sent over by ASICs themselves. So I've had to wait a little while to unveil my initial thoughts for you. They have refrained though from vetting my views beforehand, so my valued viewers get to see my opinions and thoughts before anybody else. And they're not paying me to say a single word, so. There you go. I do have these in a UK 10.5, which equates to a US 11.5. These clock in at 330 grams, which is 11.6 ounces. I believe they're about 10 grams lighter than the Gel Nimbus 23, so that's always a good start. This is the Lake Drive and Hazard Green. What a great shoe colorway name for such a beast of a fast foot foam facilitator. I believe there's a 10 mil drop here from heel to toe. I think in the sample sizes, you've got about 26 millimeters of stack in the heel and 16 in the forefoot. There's a little bit more here in my UK 10 and a half. I think this is quite a long awaited shoe that seems to be very popular over here in the UK, especially for those undertaking the marathon distance. Though we do have quite a high price here, I think the retail is quoted as about 155 earth credits. As usual with my reviews, we'll start off with the upper first. The excellently engineered mesh here on the Nimbus 24 is fantastically fitting, containing and almost feels a bit Vaporfly 4% fly knit like through the tongue. Kind of reminiscent of the tongue on the Alpha Fly as well, if you want to call it a tongue. The bit that the tongue would be in. It's kind of this stretchy knit here, as you can see, it is extremely stretchy. Another upper here that doesn't bunch up around the foot. I found that it was excellently balanced really in terms of the materials used. Just sits around the foot really nicely and then the actual laces themselves create a fantastic lockdown. Easily achieved with those flat laces, very similar to the ones that we find on the Nova Blast 2. Very little give to them and I really love the perforated toe box here, extremely breathable. One area that does add a bit of weight to the shoe, I suppose, is the copiously padded heel area. There's gallons of the stuff here, actually, around the heel collar. This is a shoe that's aimed at those longer miles, so some people might really enjoy the fact that that's been included in the shoe. Not sure I'd need all of it myself. The tongue is partially gusseted pretty much all the way down to the first eyelets, in fact. In the 40 or so miles that I've completed in the shoe so far, I've got to say it's one of the most comfortable uppers I've used in a long time. Also, one of the best-looking uppers as well. I think this shoe looks fantastic. The blues and the greens really do pop on the Nimbus 24. I think this is a shoe with mega comfort and it could be a fantastic upper for those who are undertaking the medium to long distance miles. Plush enough in the areas it needs to be, but then they've weight relieved certain parts too. I'll give it a 2.8 out of 3 after my initial runs. Just a little bit too much padding in the heel for me, though it may be ideal for some of you. Midsole now. Oh, onto the midsole now and what a real triumph it is. There's loads of ASICs tech built into this one. ASICs gel in the heel and it works superbly well in tandem with two different types of flight foam. What appears to be a standard layer of flight foam in the heel section and then pretty much the rest of the midsole was taken up with flight foam blast plus. I have to say this stuff is like a marshmallow, it's so squashy. Not completely devoid of structure like flight foam blast but it does have a very compressive and slightly denser type quality. The impact protection and the fun facilitated by the foam combo here is pretty much unmatched. It's made getting a load of miles into the shoe a real dream and it's felt great out of the box really. Didn't need to break it in at all. On closer inspection inside the shoe, you've got an ortholite insole, which does add a bit of step in kind of comfort and cushion. And underneath that insole, you've got another layer of foam as well. So you've kind of got about five different elements that come into play here to create the feeling we've got underfoot. 
I believe the gel in the heel section of the shoe is complemented by a forefoot encapsulated part as well. That just adds a little bit of stability to the forefoot section of the foam here. Now all of this may lead you to believe that this shoe might be unstable, well it couldn't be any further from the truth. I found it very controlled over the miles at my moderate paces, somewhere between 8 minutes 15 per mile and about 7 minutes 30 per mile. I found that the sweet spot for this shoe and that Flight Foam Blast Plus really does feel quite wonderful. It is holding up really well also over the miles. Got to be honest, I haven't really noticed the truss stick system that's built into the kind of midfoot area of the shoe. I think by all accounts, it's similar to the Adidas torsion system, just sort of limits the midfoot sort of twisting action that you might get. It's not really been something that I've noticed at all in the Nimbus 24. A great midsole here for a mid-paced cruiser. I found it great for building up the mileage as I leave up to the Yeovil half marathon at the end of March. It's been good for daily outings. It's cushioned enough that you can run some recoveries in it, some easy pace miles, maybe some steady pace stuff too. Probably ideal for the long run, so it's going to tick a lot of boxes. I can see this one being a great option for the more human of us, those average everyday runners that are perhaps attempting their first marathons in the near months. People that are after some copious cushion rather than those spatula enthused options. Some people don't want those really, really expensive, super lightweight, carbon plate equipped options. They're just not going to work for them. All in all, love the miles in this shoe up to now. Can't remember one that I haven't loved. The midfoot stability element here perhaps isn't really needed for me. It's probably adding a bit of weight. Uh, I'd rather that not be there and just enjoy the foam as is. As such, I'm still going to give it a high midsole score of 2.7 out of 3 after my initial runs. A really triumphant foam combo here. Reminds me a little bit, I suppose, of a even more compressive Vomero 16 outsole now. It looks like it's just AHA rubber here across the board, but actually I think it's a little more clever than that. I think a couple of sections back here in the heel are A6 high abrasion rubber, and the rest of it's made up of A6 light rubber. You can kind of feel from the actual squash of the rubber, the stuff in the back here is far more dense and kind of firm. I think that's a very sensible thing to do from A6 really, rather than just putting the same old rubber across the board, they put some of this lighter rubber here into some other areas of the shoe to minimise the weight. Stuff back here certainly a bit tougher and a little more rigid. I found the grip in the Nimbus 24 to be fantastic on pretty much any surface that I've run on. Gravel, loose stones, pavement, road, concrete, even on grass and some dirt. It just feels great. It works on pretty much everything. Always good to see a very versatile outsole, especially on a shoe that's got a higher price. The setup actually maximizes the flexibility of the shoe as well. Some outsoles, if they're a little bit too thick, it can actually stop the shoe from flexing properly. It feels a bit odd on toe off. You don't feel that in the Gel Nimbus 24. I've got no signs of wear whatsoever after 40 miles, so I think you're going to get a whole bunch of miles out of this before the outsole capitulates. I'm pretty sure the midsole foam would probably get to that point before the outsole. I think the use of the varying different rubber formulas here is really, really interesting. It's certainly going to extend the potential life of the shoe, but without weighing it down too much. I think it's tougher to actually predict how the foams might hold up over time rather than the rubber. I'm going to give it a 2.7 out of 3 for the outsole. I think they can probably shave off a tiny bit more here and there just to minimise the weight of the shoe further. Perhaps that will come with the Nimbus 25. Value now. I see this ASIC shoe as a bit of a Swiss Army shoe. I think it's going to fill a number of roles for different runners who perhaps don't want loads and loads of shoes in their rotation. People that don't want to worry so much about having a dedicated speed shoe, something for long runs, easy recovery efforts, and they can probably race in it as well if they wanted to when the time comes. As such, I just think the Nimbus 24 ticks loads and loads of boxes for a huge cross-section of runners. I think for some people it's going to be a little bit too heavy as a race shoe, but as a long run shoe, oh yes. I think that does justify the retail price of the shoe a little bit more. Sometimes you pick up some of the race shoes and they're incredibly light they feel wonderful but they're going to break down really quickly that isn't going to happen with this shoe yes it's certainly no vapor flying next percent or a6 meta speed sky but that's not what this shoe's trying to be not all great shoes have to be these super lightweight models i think some marketing has led people to believe that that is a thing but it isn't i think if you want some extremely stable but very cushioned footwear with some plusher features but still clocks in at a reasonable weight then the nimbus 24 could be the shoe for you i'm going to give it a very strong value score of 2.6 out of 3 
for those reasons. Let's remember that there's loads of people out there that have tried to run in some of these very, very lightweight carbon plate shoes and they just give them all sorts of different pains and injuries. They are not for everybody. Just look at the London Marathon or something like that. You see lots and lots of people wearing more cushioned shoes, perhaps with more sort of stability elements there. Some people just aren't interested in those carbon plate models. I think some of those shoes lack the consistency and the cushion needed for people over the 26.2 miles. This one's very well built and it's going to be durable to boot. So if I've totaled the scores up correctly, that gives us a 10.8 out of 12 after my initial runs for the A6 Gel Nimbus 24. It's good to do an initial review as well and get about 40 miles into the shoe. So I don't think I'll be moving those scores around too much. Are you a big fan of the Nimbus series from ASICS? Let me know if you're going to pick this one up down in the comments. A musical interlude for you. This one comes courtesy of Leonard Nimoy and it's a poignant one for you. There's a great track he did called A Visit to a Sad Planet where he's in the character of Spock. And Spock kind of communicates uh, stumbling upon this planet that they hadn't noticed before and they beam down to the planet only to find that it's this desolate wasteland and there's no life they can't detect anything there suddenly they do find a life form it's the last person left on the planet and they explain that it was this wonderful place beautiful nature everybody was having a wonderful time it's great sort of place and then everyone starts to quarrel and they destroy the planet and they just wreck everything and destroy everything. And then just as the song's coming to a close, they reveal that the planet is Earth. Leonard Nimoy, a visit to a sad planet. Thanks for tuning in, cats. Always appreciated. If you haven't done so already, hit that subscribe button and click the bell below for notifications. I want to roll out those new videos for you. You can also help us out too by giving this video a thumbs up like and sharing this video with your running buddies. My name's Ed Budd and I'll be seeing you.